Welcome back to Cryptolytics, giving you a fresh take on crypto analytics. Today we're going to do a little bit of airdrop farming over in the Ethereum ecosystem and we're going to start off with the ZK Sync airdrop. So let's just get straight into it, shall we? Okay, so here we are in Orbiter Finance. This is your probably your first stop, I would say, with regards to all this stuff. And your first step would be to get a MetaMask wallet. It's probably one of the best, I would say. So you'd want to set that up. If you haven't done so already, I'd be quite surprised if you didn't. And if you haven't, then set that up, save your seed phrase somewhere safe. And you could do like what I've done and have a separate wallet just for airdrops. It's completely up to you if you want to go about it that way. Or if you want to keep using the ecosystem, you could probably just use your normal wallet. That would probably be fine as well. So the first step is to bridge funds. Now, I bridged from Solana using the Jupiter Bridge, bought about $1,000 worth of ETH on Jupiter and then bridged it across, cost me 30 bucks. So yeah, it was pretty expensive to bridge. So my recommendation is to buy ETH on your centralized exchange that you have access to and bridge it across using the Arbitrum network. So that way you pay very little in gas. And just so you know, with the Orbiter Bridge, the more you bridge, the more points you get. So if you need to bridge between well, you will need to bridge probably from the Ethereum mainnet as well. But if you need to bridge from Ethereum to Arbitrum to ZK Sync Lite to ZK Sync Era, every time you move around and you bridge, you're actually gathering points. So I would say for the sake of just bridging, just do it, you know, for the sake of it. It's about 15, 30 cents, sometimes a dollar for gas. And But you do get rebates on the gas. Like a lot of the time, the gas that's not used, you get a rebate on it. So it's not too bad. It's not too bad. So yeah, so you want to come here to Orbiter Finance and bridge some of your ETH from the Arbitrum network. You can see I got a little bit left. I have already bridged across to CK Sync error and zk sync light so here's light here the first place to go is bridge some eth to zk sync light because we're gonna have to do two things to start off with before we even get into zk sync error which is the new one zk sync light is the old l2 zk sync error is the new one so basically what you want to do is you want to first grab some of your ETH from the Arbitrum network and send that over to Light because what we're going to do first is we're going to get mint an NFT. So you'll need to set this up. It'll ask you for an email address. So just go through and, you know, create an account. What this is going to do is it's going to upload an image to the IPFS, which is where Ethereum stores data. So JPEGs, files, all that sort of stuff. It doesn't store it on the chain itself. It stores it here and it's gives you a reference point that the chain will look up when it is trying to access the file. So when you upload a file, you get one of these CIDs, which kind of looks like a wallet address. And what you want to do is you want to go to files, upload a file, select a file from your computer, maybe a picture of your dog or your cat or something like that, uh, or a flower, or I don't know, whatever, just anything. And once that's uploaded, you'll see this CID. So if we go into here, you can see, just to make sure it loads, I guess. I've got two in here, the one for one wallet, one for a different one. Make sure that loads. So yep, cool, that looks like it's loading. It's one of my digital art pieces. It's the Guangzhou Library. And that looks like that loaded no problem. So cool, that looks like that's good to go. So I'll just close this one off. And you just copy this, this number here, the CID, essentially, because that's really what you're wanting. And then you go over to light.zksync.io and it's going to want to connect to your wallet. Just make sure that any of these URLs that you connect to or anything you connect your wallet address to is the right URL because the last thing you want to do is get your wallet drained by some dodgy website. So just make sure you go into the right places before you connect your wallet. It's going to want you to switch to Ethereum mainnet. Also with any of these websites, if it's asking you if you want to add a network, then you will say yes and add the network because you'll need light, you'll need Arbitrum and you'll need error. So as in ZK Sync likes Arbitrum and ZK Sync error to connect to any of these protocols so well i mean only if you bridged arbitrum or if you sent from the exchange in arbitrum either way you'll want to just connect to those because otherwise you can't interact with the chain unless you've accepted or added the network to your wallet it should be automatic these days you used to be able to have to add this stuff manually but thankfully you don't have to do that anymore so you can see here i've already minted an nft this one i think this wallet i believe is the guangzhou library one yep there it is so what you want to do is you just go here to mint nft paste your cid there it is there authorize and mint it's going to cost 20 cents in this case it'll be like a little bit different depending on the time of day it's all down to network usage all that sort of stuff but yep just do that that will go through in the NFT. Any pop-ups that come up, just click approve and okay and yes sir, no sir, three bags full. And then that's pretty much it. You will then have a mint and it will come up here and that'll be in your wallet essentially. As you can see mine's right here. 
yours should be there too. So that's where you'll see your dog, your cat, or a flower. Is that what I said before? So next thing we do is we're going to go to zigzag.exchange once that's done. Oops. Yeah, it's just, it's just a, a swap. It's a dex. It's got a uh, chart, which is pretty cool, and uh, water depth on the side. But really what you want to do is you could probably do this once a week, have like an airdrop Friday or something like that, where you just connect your wallet and swap. You can either just do like a $10 or a $5 swap from ETH back to USDC and back again. So that's like $20 worth of volume if it was $10, for example. And that way you're still keeping your active you know, position open if that's what you want. Or if you're wanting to hold stables, you go from stable like USDC to ETH then back again. You're just wanting to get basically transactions in here and volume through this just to show that you are a regular user. It is recommended you do this once a week at least because they want consistency. They don't want you to just be like an airdrop farm that comes in on a day, racks up some points, so to speak, and then you'll, you're not seeing it again until the airdrop day, you know, or something like that. And, you know, just, I started doing this back in June and I didn't really do it consistently, but they still haven't really announced anything on the airdrop yet. And so I don't think the, the snapshot's been taken just yet. So we'll just hope that the snapshot hasn't been taken yet. You can do some of this stuff and then hope for like a four figure airdrop. Nice to get like a thousand dollars out of this. My recommendation is to have about $200 to play with US. The reason why I say that is because you might want to add liquidity or use the money markets or something like that. So you want to have a little bit of money to play with, I suppose, just to make sure that you're sufficiently interacting with the protocols. So yeah, just connect your wallet, maybe just do a back and forth as a trade probably just do a market order so it swaps immediately or you could do a limit order and set it to whatever the current price is i suppose it's probably your best bet and then when that fills and is done then that's pretty much it that's all you need to do on zk sync light so that's pretty much all like for zk sync light that's all i've done anyway there's probably some other things you could possibly do but that's pretty much all i've done so we're gonna have a quick look at DeFi llama at the zk sync chain and see you know what other things we can interact with in order to potentially qualify for the airdrop so you're gonna probably assume that the stuff that's up the top is more likely to qualify for an airdrop. I'm gonna say that's pretty safe to say, to be honest. I will show you what I have done and you know, maybe you can give a crack at some of this stuff and you know, hope that, that it helps you out. So again, if you didn't bridge enough funds, then go in here, do some more bridging. Again, every time you bridge, you get points. You actually see here, they've got extra points as well. You can get five points for bridging USDC from ZK Fair to any network. What the hell is ZK Fair? I don't know. Anyway, you can go through here and, and see some other ways to get more points. So maybe you could do that. Just bridge a bunch of USDC, I suppose, which actually would be pretty straightforward, I think. Let's see, got nothing there. $5 there, or oh, $20 here. What do they want? One transaction of any amount. What does it mean by this? Fair. Let's just go area to Arbitrum. Just put $5 and send that so we can get five points. Oh, there you go. We'll need to change to the ZK Sync network anyway. So, all right, let's uh, confirm and send that one. What's this withholding fee? Wow. We have to pay $1.60. That's pretty extreme. Maybe not. Okay, so just keep in mind that this is... Well, I don't know if you're a Solana user, you might not be, but I am. And, you know, some of this gas can be quite expensive, but as I said, you do get rebates. I might be sounding a little bit dramatic with that just because I'm used to paying pretty much nothing for gas. So like 13 cents, that's not too bad. I've seen this go up to like a dollar sometimes though, uh, with like a 60% rebate. So yeah, <laughs> if you're coming from Solana, then you're probably like, whoa, what the hell? But it's not too bad. Again, we're, we are farming for an airdrop. Yeah, this is $6.60. That's extreme anyway. If that gets us uh, five points, I suppose. Get this to 23. There we go, done. And then you could probably go the other way as well, right? So get that $5 from Arbitrum oof, and then pull it back across. Look at this. Actually costs a fair bit. Things we do for these airdrops, huh? Yep, we're gonna switch back to Arbitrum and then send this, again, $1.60. I don't know what this withholding fee is. Just keep that in mind. I mean, it's a $1.60, it's not too bad, but that's like $3 for, for nothing. So there you go. Plus the 15 cents and the 15 cents. It's a $4, $4 for these points. These points better be worth it. <laughs> Who knows? Should be fine. Orbit of Finance is one of the big ones though. You know, I think if you read all the articles, threads, all that sort of stuff, you'll see Orbit of Finance is probably the one that people talk about the most, I would say. So that's okay. And I guess if they have a token too, then maybe you'll qualify for that. Now I've done a lot of this stuff before I did this video. So I'm probably just gonna show a lot more stuff than actually interact in the video. I actually already did a video, but didn't, but something malfunctioned and my screen was freezing up. So I'm doing it again. That's it, that's done. So that's pretty much it for here. Unless you run out of ETH, you can come back here and then bridge more over from Sync and Era and Arbitrum. Bridging around is probably gonna be good for the most part because Again, you get more points. So yeah, this is a fresh wallet, this one here. So you can see I don't actually have that many interactions. I did some stuff yesterday on here and 
that was pretty much it on this wallet. So that's cool. All right, what's the next thing we're gonna do? So I haven't actually seen in the list anyone talking about, you know, connecting or using money markets or adding liquidity or anything like that. But I think that like anything, if you are really getting your hands dirty in the ecosystem, you are more likely to qualify for an airdrop or a decent airdrop. So my recommendation is probably do that. Now I'm using sync swap for providing liquidity and I'm doing a ETH USDC pool. The, it's also 22.5% APR, which is pretty cool. Now, just remember when providing liquidity for a pool where one side is a stable asset and one side is a volatile asset, you can get impermanent loss. And impermanent loss is basically where you have a pool and to keep balanced, whatever, you know, if one goes up in value and the other one stays stable, then you get more of the asset that is worth less to keep the pool balanced. So that's what they mean by impermanent loss. It's impermanent until you realize the loss. So it's kind of a bit like PNL, I suppose. Now I read somewhere that it's recommended to have at least $100 if you're gonna provide liquidity. So what I did is I've added, well, I first added $10 and then I read that and I was like, well, I'm gonna add $100 in. So I put in $50 worth of USDC. So if you go to deposit, I'll show you the process. You just tick this little box here. Well, it's not really a box, it's more of a switch, isn't it? And you just put in the amount you want, let's say $50. So that, that gets you up to $100. And then if you tick this, it'll automatically provide the correct amount of ETH on the other side because it's two assets that you're providing liquidity for. This is for the automatic market maker because it's this is a DEX. So it's swapping from the liquidity that people provide in these pools, essentially. So yep, I don't have anything left because I did it before. So that's just what it looks like. And then you click this and it comes up with the window, the confirmation window for MetaMask and you click yes. And then it, you pay the gas and you know, all that stuff happens. And then it comes in here and then you'll be able to see it in your positions within here. So there you go. And then you're getting earning 22% on that at the moment, which is not bad. Just remember that if ETH runs up, half of that is in a stable coin. So if ETH goes up 10%, then the ETH in this pool of yours is actually only gonna go up 50%. But also if ETH dumps 10%, then your ETH in this pool will only dump 5%. Right, it's half of it stable and half of it is volatile. That's just how these pools work. That's what the impermanent loss is, right? So that's done. Now we've got a hundred dollars worth of liquidity in a pool. Cool, and it's earning very, very small amount of interest. That's okay. The other thing to do as well is swap on zk sync error so what you want to do is you come in here you could swap your usdc for eth there'll be a chart on the side here that comes up you can potentially use a basic strategy like using the super trend now, i wouldn't get too bogged down with uh setting this up this will go away so anyway but you know for example you just do the one hour super trend you know just buy when it's green and then sell when it's red i suppose if you wanted to you would probably want to set this up in trading view though with alerts and stuff if you're going to do that because as i said this will go away but this is what i've did i actually sold 70 worth of eth there 70 usdc worth of eth there and well what's happened to it it's <laughs> it's somewhere else anyway so yep also that i've put in the 21 smooth moving average as well so we're kind of getting a bit of a bounce off that not really it's actually coming down a bit but anyway so you could just you could either do that or you could just swap swap back and forth but again you want volume in there and you want consistency so if you did five or ten dollars back and forth then again that's your volume for the week if you were doing this on the on airdrop friday or whatever it is and yep so that would be pretty much it you're interacting with the protocol you are giving you're putting volume into the protocol i suppose uh, as in trading volume through the protocol and yeah just need to do that every now and then and once a week once you know, once every couple of weeks something like that i don't know it's up to you when you can be bothered doing it but that's pretty much that the other thing as well i haven't heard anyone talk about is money markets so i looked at reactor react what was it reaction i believe fusion this is um and i didn't really like what well, is reactor fusion it looked terrible to me so i just completely avoided it <laughs> i went straight to zero land so what you can do and again keep in mind that if any of these protocols are hacked then that would be not ideal but it could happen so probably don't put too much into these i mean it's probably fine i would say by now but just keep in mind that whatever you put in these could disappear so just keep that in mind before you start putting your life savings into this stuff probably wouldn't be doing this for airdrop farming though in all honesty as in putting your life savings into it so i've put a little bit of eth in here as you can see that i put 50 dollars in there i'm doing a stable borrow so what i mean by that is i put eth in here to provide as liquidity or equity technically because it's a money market and look at this apy it's actually pretty crazy 34 percent to provide and 50 percent to borrow so you're getting paid 34% to supply 
ETH. I mean, on, on $50, who cares? It's not a lot. And then you're also getting paid to borrow as well. That's like, those are the old days of money markets. I haven't seen anything like that for quite some time. And you are getting their token, which is zero. So you can see they've got pre-mining, all that sort of stuff going on. I've got five cents in there from like an hour or something when I, an hour ago when I did this. So not bad, actually. $50 worth of ETH, it's not too bad at all. So what I did is I provided equity, popped in 50 ETH and then borrowed 50% LTV. What's this here? 62.5 actually. So that's pretty degen in all honesty. But anyway, so that's pretty much all I did. I just put in some ETH, $50 worth, 0.2, borrowed 50% against it. I'm guessing because the loan to value or the collateral weight, I suppose, is maybe like 80% or something. So that's why it says 62. 0.5%. But yeah, because I've put in ETH and I'm borrowing ETH against it, you know, if ETH dumps, then the value of my borrow dumps as well. Or if ETH pumps, the value of my borrow pumps equally. So, it, you know, I shouldn't have to have any, well, I shouldn't have any issues with liquidation for this because it's, you know, the price of ETH is just going to be the same. ETH is always going to be one ETH, <laughs> right? ETH can't depeg from itself. So that's cool. You could do that or you could borrow USDC or something if you want to. But again, that's that's no longer a stable borrow. Uh, but again, what we're doing is we are interacting with the protocol. You know, we're putting some equity in there. We're, you know, we're leaving these footprints, right? So we're so we're seeing during the during the process when they're going through to see what uh, what different wallets have done in the ecosystem. Getting 60% APY as well, which is pretty cool on $46. So big deal. You are paying 3.58% to borrow this, but again, you're getting you're paying you're getting paid 50% to do this. So I mean that's not bad. And what I did is once I borrowed that ETH, then I came over to Errolend. Now I actually already put money in here and I didn't even realize. So I must have done that yesterday. Connect your wallet, go through all that stuff if it comes up. So I've put in here $90 worth of ETH. So all you do, so there's only got two pools here. So supply PY a whopping 0.2%. I mean, it's like nowhere near as good as Zero Lend, but uh, yeah, it's one of the ones that you'll see on articles and in X threads and stuff like that. If anyone ever mentions money markets, which I've only ever seen, I think on one. So again, you could pop your some of your ETH in here. I mean, you're not really earning that much on it, but that's fine. I'm not even going to borrow bother borrowing against this in here. It's no, there's no real point. I think two money markets is more than enough. They've got their own. TGE is in token generation event. They've, it looks like they're doing their own token as well, which is pretty cool. So I don't really have any points, I guess. Active users? Yeah, I don't know. Have, have a look at this and see if there's something that you could do in here. Because again, who, you might get airdropped for something in here as well, which would be pretty cool. If so, it says here the Zinc Sync mainnet. I don't know if they're talking about light. I'm pretty sure they're talking about error. So go check this out. Maybe you'll get some points. That would be pretty cool. Now look at that. You probably need to put a little bit more than what I've put in there in order to qualify for this stuff. But I'm just doing it for the airdrop for the ZK Sync. So, you know, if you want, you could put more in here. I mean, $90, like, you know, apparently that's not enough. So, okay, that's pretty much it for that, I think. The next thing is, uh, there's this thing called robots.farm. This is something I saw in an article. And all you do is you can come over here, connect your wallet, and you get these raffle tickets. I don't know, you can probably check on this every now and then as well. You can get them for free, just pay gas like 15 cents or something like that. Again, it's just interacting with the protocol, right? And you can play the games and stuff as well, I suppose, if you want to. I don't know if you, if you if you don't mind. I don't know why it looks like this. I guess because it's a game, so they've like kind of gamified the GUI, but I don't know, it looks a bit weird. <laughs> so yeah, there's this, there's some games and stuff down below here. I think that's kind of, you, you know, you're more likely to win, I guess. <laughs> I don't really do raffles and stuff so much, but anyway. So I just, you click on this button here um, and you mint yourself a ticket, I suppose. And then, yeah, you just read up here. And I, I don't really care if I win or not. It's a free ticket anyway. Um, again, it's just interacting with another protocol. So that's all I really care for with regards to this. So I've got my ticket you can grab yours too. And that's pretty much all you have to do. I mean, you can come down here and see what they've got here, but yeah, that's up to you if you want to do that or not. I don't know if these are NFTs or what, I'm not really sure. I'll let you uh, check that out if you really care. And the last thing I wanted to do was interact with a perp deck. So here we go, derivatives. So I'm going to go to Derivio, Derevio. I'm probably not saying that right. And just before I opened up a long trade, which is probably a quite underwater now, not that it really matters. I just basically came in here and put a like $11 worth of ETH down on a long trade, 10X leverage. 
it's pretty DJ in this thing because there's not even any stop losses or take profits or anything. It's just like just ape into a position and then hope for the best, which is very, very DJ. So yeah, $11, 10x. So it's about $110 position size, I think, something like that. Uh, my liquidation, I think, is 2100 or something. I'm definitely underwater right now because I opened before and then price started going against me. But again, I'm just interacting with this protocol, essentially. That's all I'm really doing for this stuff. And if, you know, if I get liquidated, so be it. Hopefully I don't get liquidated, but it's going to be $11 worth of ETH, so it's not too bad. I just want to stop loss in here. I did set up a little strategy as well in here, but I'm guessing that it got cleared off because with a lot of these, they don't really save your charts, which is super annoying. All right, so I'm guessing this is isolated as well, as in the margin for this is isolated. So, I mean, if you could probably open up multiple positions if you wanted to. I'm not really sure what because you can trade on this. Probably just ETH, maybe something else. I don't really know. I'm guessing this is like probably still, I think it's not obviously not in beta because otherwise it would probably say beta, but oh, here we go. Let's see what else you can trade. Oh, look at that. You can trade DAI to USDC. How's that for a stable? You could just go like 100x USDC DAI. Uh, no, don't do that. <laughs> don't ever do 100x anything. Uh, that's all pretty much you've got here. Just these. So it's just pretty much ETH and BTC and, you know, variations of of that so with you know between stable a stable coin and eth or a stable coin and btc that's fine so there's my underwater position see the chart has reset i had this on one hour well there's no chart there so yeah you just basically go yeah you know whatever so you want to put in so ten dollars i don't know you don't have to do this really you could just go usdc and usdt if all you're doing is farming for the airdrop right again it's an app interaction i don't even know why i did this I, like this i just went long for the hell of it just for fun but in hindsight if if all you want to do is interact with the protocol and you know put volume through it then that would be the best thing to do i'd, I'd say and not ape into this because there's no there's no stop loss there's no take profit there's no nothing it's just like okay cool just like ape into a position and you know hope for the best and just close i guess anyway this isn't loading so yeah my liquidation prices you'll see it here if you do open up a trade again i'm not that bullish right now i'm bullish i guess long term <laughs> but yeah not super bullish right now at this point in time but anyway i've just gone long anyway i also bought a whole bunch of soul but that was spot so i don't have to worry about liquidating let's see let's just go 21 and again whatever you do here don't put too much effort into setting this up because it's just going to clear it anyway it would be pretty handy if it showed you your trade on the chart but i don't think it does oh it's powered by pith that's pretty cool since you've got no stop loss or take profit i probably wouldn't go too hard into this if you were to open a trade so there we go we're playing the 21 moving average bounce potentially here we go so that's what i'm playing for this one and maybe it'll be okay maybe it won't i don't really see ETH bouncing off it too much it bounced off rejection didn't hold and rejected again then went down there yeah i guess it kind of does it yeah there's a bit of a bounce bit of a recovery dump below failure to get back above it then down so i guess it does yeah it's a bit when it's bullish it does bounce off there so maybe we'll get a bounce here to back up here or something i guess you know that's probably my position there and then I'd say stop loss would be there if I was to have a stop loss or close it there, 23.13. So probably just go to trading view, set yourself a price alert in there and maybe set another price alert where you want to take profit and then that's fine. That's your app interaction with this. It's a bit slow, but that's probably because of my computer rather than anything else. Anyway, there you go. So that's another app interaction. I'd say that's pretty much it for the most part. I mean, you can go through and see what else there is. There's probably some NFT platforms and stuff as well, but for the most part, I think that's probably okay. Well, there's a launch pad. I don't know. You want to get involved in some launch pads? But these are, yeah, they, you're getting down the list a bit more. I would say more likely they'll be keeping an eye on the top, say the top 15 or something like that, I would say. So you play around with these ones and, you know, you, that's pretty much all you're doing. You're just trying to get app interactions, on-chain activity, frequency, you know, you want to be doing it frequently enough, you know, maybe once a week or something like that. Because with all these airdrop farmers now, there's people that come and they, you know, they'll spend like a day or two airdrop farming and then they'll just leave. So I think that's like a big thing as well. They, they really want people to be kind of sticky on the uh on the network so that's probably what you will need to do in order to qualify so i think that's probably enough i would say you know swapping back and forth between eth and usdc on sync swap maybe providing liquidity maybe providing some money in a money market like what i've done with zero lend and era lend that's uh that's something so you'll be getting some farming there as well which is pretty cool so you might get that token you might get airdrop there as well which, which will be pretty cool and yeah you've got these whatever this is these tickets you know these raffle tickets sure maybe you'll win something maybe you won't who cares again
get app interaction. And then the other thing as well is just bridging and bridging gets you points as well. So if you want to just flip USDC, probably not USDC because of that dollar sixty for, for nothing. Maybe just do the dollar sixty or the bridge for USDC for those five point lots. I think it, it's ongoing. So you can actually keep doing that. It says zero of one. I actually did that, so I don't know why it says zero of one. So anyway. That's until the Jan the 10th. Oh, so in interacting with this, you've got until the 10th of Jan before this is done. So these are your quests. What's this one? Bridging four transactions of any amount of USDC. Oh, okay. Well, that's quite a few points. Anyway, so you could do this and there's an NFT as well, which you could get from whatever NFT thing they have. I'm guessing OpenSea, I'm not really sure. Anyway, if you're into NFTs, check that out. But I think that's pretty much it. So hopefully that helped and hopefully this will qualify you for an airdrop. And these airdrops, you know, you might get like four figures out of it, like 1500 bucks, thousand dollars, something like that. Pretty nice, it's pretty nice for, I mean, you know, the more of this stuff you do, you'll, you know, you'll spend a bit in gas and stuff like that, but, or maybe you'll get liquidated $11 or $10 with a VETH if you degen like I did over on this the Rivio. But uh, if you keep it safe and, you know, just do some stable farms or some not too degen stuff, just at, at, again, as I said, app interactions, all that sort of thing, then hopefully you will qualify. So if you like this video, then please give the video a like. That would be greatly appreciated. And subscribe to the channel if you want more content like this. Hit that bell notification too if you want to be notified when I release videos. Again, we don't really know if the snapshot has been taken yet for ZK Sync. So it's worth at least trying to see what you can do before that happens. And I'm guessing the token will probably come out next year in 2024. So the hope is there that we get enough of this farming done to qualify and, you know, maybe just do it once every Friday, just a couple of things, not too much. And um, yeah, I think that should be it. So anyway, keep safe out there. This is Cryptolytics signing out. Have a good one.